Dobro jutro. Good morning. I hope you can hear me well. No, I suggest uh, it's uh, nine o'clock and one minute, and uh, I see that the number of participants is increasing. Perhaps we could wait for uh, another minute and then start. Oh, once again, good morning. I suggest uh, we should start with today's webinar. And uh, anyone who joins us later on will be able to engage with us without problem. Let me use this opportunity to welcome you to the fifth webinar entitled the benefits of the public participation in the creation of uh, environmental policies including experience from estonia and bosnia and herzegovina this webinar takes place within the activities uh, on the development of the environmental strategy and action plan for bosnia and herzegovina ESAP 2030 plus which is implemented uh, with uh, the Stockholm Environment Institute uh, with the local partner Innova and uh, 1021. The project is funded by the Kingdom of Sweden. Within the activities on the development of ESAP 2030 plus, we formed seven working groups uh, which are using participatory approach to create the content of the strategy. My name is Maya Maritic Tira, and uh, I'm the lead expert together with the co lead experts, Snežana Mihic Mihailovic, uh, manage the work of the environmental management group. Both of us uh, will be moderating today's webinar, and the purpose is to provide an opportunity to uh, learn more about the engagement of public in environmental management. We have guests from uh, Estonia, Ms. Uh, Kaida Kai Peterson and Mr. Kaupo Hina, and uh, Ms. Uh, Veljovic and Mr. Bielic from Bosnia and Herzegovina. The guest presenters uh, will address the issue of the importance and uh, explain why is it so important, uh, the, the participation of the public so important. For introduction, my colleague, Sejana Mihic Mihailovic, uh, will provide a brief overview of the activities of the Working Group for the Environmental Management, and uh, she will address the key challenges identified by the members of the Working Groups. Some of them pertain to the participation of the public uh, in the decision-making process uh, on environmental issues. Let me note that this event is organized on the Zoom platform in form of a webinar, which means that all the participants uh, can ask questions to the guest presenters through the box Q&A, which you can see on the bottom of your screen. There will be no possibility for the participants to ask questions directly orally. All questions should be asked through this uh, 
Q&A functionality. My colleague uh, and myself will read all these questions and uh, within the Q&A sessions, the guest uh, presenters uh, the will uh, provide answers to your questions. This was just a brief introduction and now I hand over to Snezhana to provide us with an insight into our topic. Thank you very much, Maya. Thank you all for taking the interest in this webinar and the topic uh, participation of the public. As Maya said, I will use several slides and try to present the results and the developments uh, of the work in our working groups and link this uh, with uh, linkages with today's seminar. It should be noted at the beginning that the process of development of uh, strategy and action plans of Bosnia and Herzegovina is uh, developing in within working groups. Uh, my colleague Maya and myself uh, uh, lead and moderate uh, the activities of the working group uh, on environmental management. It is particularly important to note that uh, we use participatory approach and uh, 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 all the sectors are involved in the activities, private sector, non-governmental, governmental sector, and and academia. Uh, we formed the uh, working groups for all four levels of the government. We have a working group for uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina and special working groups for both entities and the Bačko district. So far, we have held two meetings of these working groups uh, at all levels. Uh, the process uh, started to identify uh, uh, accelerate in autumn last year. This uh, year, we uh, will have most activities uh, on the development of all the documents. Uh, uh, we want the documents to reflect the actual situation and the key challenges that the participants identified. Regarding the key challenges, uh, it should be noted uh, primarily that uh, they are related to the scope of the work uh, of the working groups uh, in the thematic area uh, environmental management and some key processes the process of uh, environmental assessment and strategic environmental assess impact assessment then the strategies and the processes related to licensing and issuance of permits then we should also uh, note the uh, processes uh, of issues of in integrated licenses and uh, processes related to spatial planning. Uh, we should also note uh, the importance of the horizontal coordination and uh, coordin that is coordination among all the bodies responsible for the environment. Uh, and the area uh, which we also cover is the access to the public and the participation to the public uh, of the public, uh, which is most relevant for today's uh, webinar. We address key issues that are linked with the, the area of rights and democracy. We, as we will hear later on in the presentations, uh, this is covered by the Arcus, Arcus Convention and the relevant directives of the EU. Key challenges uh, within the main strategic goal, which is, which is common for all the strategic documents, and that's in improved uh, environmental management. Uh, they are divided uh, among the four levels of the governments. The majority of the challenges pertain to the institutional framework. Uh, the, in, the, the state level is uh, uh, to, uh, responsible for coordination of the institution. So we have, uh, and we also identified some challenges regarding the application and implementation of international 
uh, agreements and conventions and monitoring. Some of these challenges are also present at the level of, of the entities. Uh, as for the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, as you can see, there are much more challenges which are related to the legal framework, uh, including the lack of certain bodies uh, for uh, legislative bodies which could adopt the legislation and enforce the legislation. We also have problems in institutional framework, coordination of uh, institutions among them. And it is uh, particularly important to notice also that uh, we identified the monitoring challenge, challenges related to monitoring, participation of the public and access to the uh, to information, public access to information and participation of the public, which we will discuss today. Regarding uh, Republika Srpska, the situation is comparable. The most uh, challenges are linked with the uh, uh, legal framework, the inadequacy ad and lack of uh, regulations, inefficient implementation of international agreements. Then we also have challenges related to the institutional frameworks, which are also related to the public access to information. And for Bočko district, we again uh, pursuant to the responsibilities of the Bačko district. And uh, we also have some challenges related to the institutional framework. What is important for today's web, uh, webinar are the challenges related to the participation of the public. There are several types of challenges in this regard. Uh, we uh, established that uh, we have a, a set up a legal framework for free access to information and participation of the public, but uh, we still observe difficulties uh, regarding the implementation and enforcement of these provisions. Not all the institutions have been transparent uh, in uh, their work, uh, and uh, uh, there are also certain problem in the uh, civil sector too uh, over the recent period uh, we have uh, uh, seen some both formal and informal non-governmental organizations which can provide a quality contribution to the decision making processes but uh, still the problem remains with the response of the public uh, to public hearings so we have problems on on uh, uh, among uh, different stakeholders but it is important to understand that in the development of the process uh, in the development process of ESAP 2030 we open possibility for all the stakeholders and actors to provide their contribution whatever i showed you in the previous slides uh, regarding uh, the challenges uh, these challenges were uh, identified uh, with the participation of all the slate stakeholders, uh, including uh, representatives of civil society, private sector, academia, governmental bodies. Uh, we believe that this is a normal part of the participation battery approach and all the stakeholders and actors should be encouraged to come forward with their proposal. If there are some conflicting issues, uh, we uh, will discuss them and uh, uh, seek to achieve a compromise. Uh, I invite and encourage all of you who are not involved in the work of the working groups for uh, to apply and to send a message to one of the emails, which you can see on the screen. We will share them later on in our chat box. This is the general info ESAP uh, email and um, the emails uh, of myself and Maya. You can write to us and I hope you will engage more actively in our working groups. That would be all from my side. Of course, uh, I will, together with Maya, moderate uh, this uh, webinar until the end. Thank you. Thank you, Snežana. Thank you for this introductory presentation. Once again, if I may remind uh, participants, any questions, 
you may have for our presenters, panelists, uh, you can send to the Q&A uh, functionality, which is on the bottom of the screen next to the chat box. Now, may I introduce, announce uh, the first presenter, Ms. Maya Peterson, will provide uh, us with an insight into benefits and challenges of the public participation, and she will try to explain why uh, the participation of the public is so important. Ms. Kaya Peterson uh, works at the say. Tallinn of uh, SEI Tallinn since 1993. She is a senior researcher and uh, uh, head of the research since 2000. She is a direct, the director of the Sustainable Development Program. Her fields of interest and in research include environmental policy, specifically environmental assessment issues, such as the methods of impact assessment, environmental management, the process of public involvement, and the consideration of results of public involvement in the decision-making process. She has published several books, guidelines, and papers on these issues, and she's also a respected lecturer on these topics. May I invite now Ms. Kaya Peterson to provide her presentation. Yeah, thank you and good morning to everyone. Um, so I hope my slides will be presented. Yes, thank you, Senka. Um, so yeah, thank you for the invitation to, to present uh, uh, the theory and, and also to provide you with uh, some of the examples from my own experience on public participation because uh, when we look back into the history of public participation, then we find that uh, it actually uh, it was uh, put on the, on the screen or, or on the table by the environmental impact assessment. Uh, and uh, this was the moment where uh, the decision makers realized that uh, it's not only enough to take into consideration the technical aspects, uh, the, the, what the experts of different uh, technical areas provided. But it appears that uh, since the environment is a common good, then all the people, the communities, the society at large uh, should have a say how they envisage the use of the land, the use of the natural resources and, and uh, more broadly the na natural values. And this, uh, this was the reason why the mm, certain rules were set or, already in the, in the 1970s, 1980s, and, and particularly when the environmental assessment uh, procedures were developed. So in my presentation, I would shortly uh, touch upon the, why the public participation is important uh, and uh, also the theory of the public participation, because uh, it's, it's sometimes good to, um, uh, to, to know about what, is the, what are the key issues, uh, what the, the different authors and schools of public, public participation have uh, regarded important and, and how to build up a good participation um, uh, process. And uh, that's why there are prerequisites for public participation. There are certainly benefits because otherwise uh, the public participation wouldn't uh, get such an attention as uh, it has. But of course, there are challenges and, uh, and uh, and not all the public participation modes or, or activities or um, the rungs of the ladder of uh, PNP uh, are equally useful, equally applied, and even what is the aim of the, the public participation, it, it does vary uh, quite a lot. 
So let's start with, uh, with um, uh, why the public participation is, uh, is important. As I said, uh, the environment uh, is, is not uh, owned by anybody personally, but it's a public good. So uh, all, the, all the people uh, of the community, of the society, or globally at large should take responsibility for a good environment and the sustainable management of the environment. Environment in a very broad sense, not only uh, certain resources, but, but all the, the, the environment, uh, the outer environment at large because uh, environment doesn't have a voice. So the people should be the spokesman of the environment. And as I referred, uh, the EIA process was, uh, was actually the initiator of uh, developing the rules of public participation because um, uh, it was realized that it's not only that we postulate public participation, but it should be also given the rules the ways how to do it and, and, and how to communicate it, how to consider the different inputs and contributions from uh, different stakeholder groups to the decision makers and, and how to motivate the decision at the, eventually. And this was also the, the birthplace of Aarhus uh, Convention in 1998. Uh, because uh, it was realized by several countries that some unified universal uh, rules are needed and, and how, what are the good practices of, uh, of public participation in decision making, but not only in decision making, but also access to the information and, and access to justice. And, uh, Last but not the least, uh, it's also about the democracy because uh, hearing uh, uh, the different stakeholders, hearing the public uh, and uh, considering their concerns, their proposals, uh, this is a, a quite a natural way of doing uh, decision making in a democratic uh, society. So it's about democracy. The next one. As to the theory, uh, you may be surprised that uh, the theory of public participation goes actually quite uh, a long way uh, to the history. And already in 1969, um, an American researcher, Sherry Arnstein, provided uh, this um, pyramid of public participation that is on the right hand side of the slide. And as you can see, there are different uh, uh, terms uh, how to describe the, the different uh, extent of public participation in decision making. And uh, what are most used uh, uh, by the decision makers and starting with the manipulation where uh, somebody is, uh, is just uh, as a, as a rubber stamp uh, to uh, decisions uh, up to the citizen control, uh, where the citizens or citizen organizations are, are really given uh, uh, quite a big deal of uh, organizing and management of different public uh, goods uh, and, and all the way uh, between those uh, two extremes. Maybe just uh, some of the, the terms that might not be familiar to uh, us uh, daily, but as, uh, as, the, um, as the researcher Ar Einstein has uh, provided, uh, there are, from starting from those manipulation or, or no participation to the, to the uh, full participation, at the top, but uh, also there are some uh, ambiguous, quite uh, gray areas of participation. Uh, but uh, what, the, what the other researchers have uh, adapted uh, to this pyramid is that uh, there are certainly uh, quite commonly used uh, 
uh, activities like in, uh, informing or information uh, is very important. The consultations are very important. But uh, as I said, they have uh, different degrees of, uh, of uh, public involvement. And uh, this tokenism, which is, uh, which is really uh, can also step in in several cases where the uh, stakeholders are involved uh, symbolically. Uh, they, they are not uh, expected uh, for true contributions, but, uh, but uh, this is more a symbolic uh, uh, effect or effort uh, that is expected. And uh, on the left hand side, uh, maybe this is more a, a familiar um, step or staircase uh, also from informing uh, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, already consultations. And, uh, and uh, this is regarded as a, as a co-creation process where the stakeholders together with the public officials uh, or nominated by the public officials, organizations and the agencies work together to find the solutions, to find the best uh, options, uh, the alternatives. And uh, so the result is co-created. Uh, Next slide, please. And uh, so the prerequisites uh, for, for uh, effective uh, and uh, uh, widespread public participation uh, works uh, the best when, when there are already organized groups. Let's say there are umbrella or representative organizations of certain stakeholders. Because uh, if there are, let's say, thousands of uh, agricultural producers or forest owners or, or fishermen, uh, then, then it's very difficult to reach out to them uh, individually and uh, it will become really a big effort to involve them. So it's, it's uh, really up to the public authorities as well to promote the organizations and the representative organizations of different stakeholder groups who have uh, the uh, mandate uh, to represent uh, different organizations of the sector. And then it makes uh, uh, it easy and more effective uh, to address the associations or, or, um, or unions uh, or other um, communities uh, that have the representative um, uh, mandate. Of course, uh, we can rely on uh, uh, good practices, uh, but uh, what life has shown is that uh, the regulations are also very much needed. How to organize, uh, whom to involve, uh, for, for what, uh, and to what extent uh, duration and how the contributions are handled. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, the different stakeholder groups are more apt to, uh, to participate, uh, and not only in this particular case, but also in, uh, in the coming uh, cases in the future, when they see that it is not superficial exercise, but, uh, but really their uh, best uh, knowledge, their proposals and ideas uh, are expected. Which means that uh, public participation takes time and resources, and it has to be uh, well uh, planned. So the benefits uh, of the public participation uh, is uh, yeah, a strengthened democratic process, uh, and it also increases the trust to the, to the authorities and also outcomes of the process. And if the, the stakeholders are involved, their voice is listened, then it also strengthens the ownership of the final document. And uh, just an example, the European Commission uh, is, is doing very widely um, the public engagement and seeking uh, different opinions from the member states. 
and the stakeholders. Uh, and uh, so before each of the uh, adoption of uh, a directive or regulation, uh, quite a widespread uh, consultations are held. But of course, there are also challenges of uh, public participation. And uh, on one hand, we can uh, uh, reverse all the, the benefits into it. If, if those uh, issues are not addressed, then, uh, then they become challenges. But also, uh, I would like to draw from my own experience that, uh, yes, uh, public participation is a difficult exercise uh, for the public authorities, for the developers, uh, and also for the NGOs and the communities, civil society groups, uh, because uh, it uh, needs uh, special expertise, it uh, needs to follow the rules, uh, and so forth. Uh, and uh, sometimes, uh, even if uh, everything is well planned, well resourced, uh, things may, may go wrong or, or very complicated. And uh, that's why it's, it's worthwhile of also considering to have, uh, let's say, a, a moderator, uh, which is not directly uh, uh, a public authority person, a civil. Uh, public officer, uh, but, but uh, an external uh, consultant. Uh, and uh, and uh, especially this is important in cases where there are controversial uh, viewpoints uh, and, uh, and maybe the stakeholders are all barricading and, uh, and it's very difficult to, to build or restore the trust uh, between the stakeholders. But um, uh, yeah, it's, it's very important to, um, to, um, to, uh, to take into consideration that, uh, um, that uh, the different modes, uh, the public hearings, working groups, commissions, uh, client roundtables, uh, with this experience, uh, there is a growing body of uh, also how to organize those uh, meetings, uh, how to involve people and, uh, and uh, so everybody knows their role and, and also uh, the limitations of, uh, of their uh, contribution. So there are a lot uh, to think about and now uh, I think we, we can hear some of the examples and, uh, and practices from your own country. So thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Mrs. Kaya, for your presentation. Just to remind you again that the participants can pose questions through Q&I session and in chat there is a link from which you can download the presentations because we already got uh, a question regarding this and my colleague Snyajana already responded. But just to remind you again, in chat option, there is a link from which you can download the presentation that you hear today on the webinar. Now we would like to move on to the presentation on the practice of civil society organizations in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And the first presentation regarding the challenges and advantages uh, from the uh, civil society organization perspective will be presented by Viktor Bielic, representative of Center for Environment Banja Luka. Mr. Viktor Bielic, is a geographist, a seismologist uh, with university degree from Banja Luka with a vast experience uh, in different programs and activities uh, where he used to work as a volunteer and an expert. He founded and he coordinates Arhu Center Banja Luka and the network of Arhu centers in Bosnia and Herzegovina. At the Center for Environment, Mr. Bielic worked 
work as a project coordinator and vice president. He also is one of the founder for a coalition of Coalition for the Protection of the Rivers in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Victor, the floor is yours. Morning, everyone. I'm happy to see that there are so many interested parties, and I will use this opportunity to congratulate the International Women's Day to all ladies. I will try to shorten the presentation and briefly just touch upon the Orchus uh, convention ratif uh, that was adopted in 98 and ratif ratified a few years later. And this is a novelty where we want a, a public to participate in the uh, uh, in impact assessment of the projects um, uh, that um, started from 2020. And then we will talk about the procedures for issues uh, of environment permits and the activities that can have a significant impact on environment and they are implemented through uh, public consultations, if so envisaged, and through public uh, insight into documentation. I will refer to Kaya's presentation, um, where we talk about the um, settling of the public in the sense that the comments from public that are delivered uh, are uh, not always high quality comments, but they represent the concerns of the public. And the deadline is really short for the public, especially for those who are not experts on the topic, this deadline of 30 days that is envisaged for submitting comments or information by public is not long enough. Public information should be available uh, at least in one uh, public media. Through the Ministry of Environment Protection or the other public bodies. I'll give you one example from Bosnia and Herzegovina that is related to tsunami of the small hydro plants in Bosnia and Herzegovina. In Balkan, they envisaged around the 3,000 hydro plants, uh, small, medium, and large, and more than 400 of them are planned in Bosnia and Herzegovina. All these hydropower plants that uh, uh, got a concessionary agreement became uh, 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 plants of public interest, and they received the status of public interest such public interest, and I'm talking about 2005-2011, has been pronounced without the quality environment assessment, which means that all rivers have been endangered and damaged. Currently, Bosnia and Herzegovina is exporting one fourth of electrical power, which means that we have sufficiently produced the electrical power. We have foreign and national investors, and they are interested in doing so because they have subsidies for building. 
the hydro power plants. Mali hidroelektrana su planirane i u Nacionalnom parku Sutjeska, koji je zapravo prvi nacionalni park u Bosni i Hercegovini, najstariji od nastaviše druge godine, gdje se nalazi najveća evropska prašuma Prvičica, a sam nacionalni park naravno prašuma. Naval forest, and uh, this is a habitat for very rare and endemic species. This is a photo showing the canyon of uh, the river Sutjeska and Hrtovka, which are in the national park. Uh, and uh, you can see here the Balkan wild goat, which is protected, uh, which is uh, one of the species on the red list of Republika Srpsk and uh, one endemic species, which is Adriantus sutiescae, which was named after this area. This is a plant which you can find only there and nowhere in the world. The concession agreements uh, were concluded in 2006 for five mini hydropower plants. Four of them are within the park and one is on the boundary of this national park. The government of Republika Srpska issued the decision approving the construction on in 2012. The uh, overall plan uh, power was 12.8 megawatts and they declared the public interest, although the investor is a privately owned company. Now let's me uh, show you one case study. This is the construction of uh, small hydropower plants on the river Hrčavka. I will uh, provide more details uh, about the procedure. This uh, company uh, filed uh, the application and announced on the 19th March 2013 and, and uh, informed that the public uh, has uh, access, that these are the first steps that the public is informed of the developments and uh, they can get involved. In uh, my uh, environmental center uh, reviewed the documentation and provi we provided our opinion. Uh, some of the arguments we used uh, was that uh, this interferes with the uh, Natura uh, habitat, 2000 habitats uh, and endangered species such as uh, brown bear, some uh, invertebrates, and some endemic uh, species. Uh, and uh, we also refer to the Biodiversity Convention and the obligations that Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, to which Bosnia and Herzegovina committed when it ratified the convention. And uh, we also refer to the Emerald Network, uh, which is uh, present there. This is the situation at the public hearing in Foča. As you can see, there were not too many participants, but it was a mechanism which uh, we used. Several months thereafter, the relevant uh, ministry actually approved uh, the study on environmental impact. Also, the impact was not explained uh, properly and in detail, and there were some other failures in the procedure. The center filed uh, an administrative suit one month thereafter, uh, and uh, we uh, stressed several points which pertain to the impact on the adverse impact on the environment of uh, this uh, small hydropower plants in the National Park of Sutjeska. And we uh, said that uh, it was uh, in conflict uh, with the management plan a new management plan, which was not adopted yet in the previous plan, 
uh, no hydropower plants were also envisaged either. Several months thereafter, the relevant, uh, the responsible minister uh, issued the new decision, which uh, granted uh, the application of the company and uh, the previous decision was amended and the installed power of the turbine for each of these uh, how the power plants was changed in this procedure it is possible to request changes but if the changes are significant uh, then uh, there is a requirement to carry out a new environmental impact study however the ministry concluded that it was not necessary in this case to conduct a new study because the changes were not important and uh, not significant in our case that was uh, in our opinion that was not the case uh, in early 2014 uh, we uh, filed a shoot a year thereafter in february 2015 the court rendered the judgment uh, uh, granting uh, our shoot uh, and explaining that uh, the allegations of the shoot uh, were justified uh, and that there was no legal basis or support point in the law to issue the permit for this construction. Uh, this is a good example of the participation of public and access to justice if we are not uh, happy with the outcome of the participation of the public we are in a position to institute administrative procedure mr victor just uh, to warn you of uh, the time lot you have you should please uh, bring to an end this presentation a month thereafter the responsible ministry uh, issued the conclusion that terminated uh, the procedure. And I should uh, also note that there were similar procedures for other two uh, small power plants. Uh, one is on the boundary and one is within the territory of the national park. Uh, both uh, were decided uh, to our favor. This uh, small hydropower plants uh, are envisaged in the new spatial plan, but the proposal was withdrawn at the session of the National Assembly of Republika Srpska under the pressure of the public and uh, citizens initiative, uh, within which uh, over 7,000 citizens signed the initiative. So this was withdrawn from the agenda of the National Assembly of Republika Srpska. These are several photos showing the campaign of the citizens' uh, initiative. Media are also uh, very important uh, in the whole procedure. We did not wait. Uh, we continued working and uh, conducted the first uh, uh, post-war research in this uh, canyon of Hrčavka and Sutjeska, and we obtained some new knowledge and information of this area. And the conclusion of all this is that the participation of the pu uh, public uh, enabled us to provide comments uh, and uh, during public hearings regarding the adverse impact of uh, small hydropower plants uh, on the canyons, we obtained uh, two judgments against the, the construction the government decided to stop the process uh, the public is against the small power hydropower plants uh, we obtained some new arguments and information and uh, before uh, this uh, procedure was closed we also prepared a complaint under the burn convention and we are waiting for the procedure to be finally and uh, irrevocably terminated and uh, i will show a few photos and the address to which you can send to me any questions or comments thank you thank you mr bielic 
Now we will continue with the uh, new presentation case studies with the examples of contribution of the civil society in the creation of policies in Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, by Emina Veljovic. She is a member of the Arcus Center Sarevo. She is executive director of the Arcus Center Sarevo and she's a Bachelor of Law in Legal Studies. She also holds an MA with the focus on the environmental policies and laws in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Emina is actively working on legal changes in Bosnia and Herzegovina for small hy hydropower plants after a legal declaration of a moratorium on their construction. Emina, you have the floor. To smo prešli, Senka, možemo li dobiti prezentaciju gospođe Emine? Can we have the presentation of Ms. Emina, please? Gospođe Emina, ne čujemo vas. Da li vi nas čujete? Emina? We cannot hear you. We see the presentation, but uh, we don't hear you. Could you please check if uh, you unmuted your mic? We see you, but we still cannot hear you. We still don't receive anything from Ms. Emina. Ms. Emina, if you could please try to leave the meeting and re-enter. We apologize for this inconvenience. Uh, it's still not time for a break uh, before uh, Emina gets back to us. We had several questions, and as Maya reiterated, the questions should be asked in writing. The participants have uh, access to Q&A functionality to ask questions and provide. And you can write uh, your questions uh, or logistic uh, problems you may have uh, through the chat box. I see some raised hand, but unfortunately, we are not uh, in a position to let you speak in us. So one question was for Mr. Bielic, and it was uh, in relation with the slide, how uh, the participation of the public is implemented in the environment and why the strategic uh, impact assessment uh, has uh, been has not been made public uh, because the presentation uh, said that uh, small hydropower plants uh, have been developed without energy plans and strategies. Uh, Victor wrote the answer. He said uh, he mentioned uh, the strategic impact assessment and uh, 
he said that unfortunately he missed to refer to SEA, SEI, and uh, now you have his uh, answer in writing. Now I think Amina is back with us, but uh, we cannot hear her still. We still cannot hear Amina. Now we receive you. Welcome. Good morning. Uh, I apologize for this inconvenience. Uh, I received the info that it was a communication problem, but we found a, pro a solution. And now I will proceed with my presentation. Can you see my presentation? If uh, that's not possible, perhaps uh, you could uh, use full screen setup. I entitled it uh, Legal Fights and Struggles Towards Sustainable Goals uh, from the Aspect of Public Participation. As you will see at the, in the presentation, the ARCO Center focuses on legal uh, remedies uh, for through the promotion of a AUKUS uh, convention, which uh, second pillar requires uh, adequate participation of the public uh, in all aspects of the environment. As my colleague Victor previously noted, uh, the establishment of the coalition for rivers uh, together with the AUKUS center, we are trying to prevent the so-called tsunami of construction of mini hydropower plant in Bosnia and Herzegovina. As you may know, Bosnia and Herzegovina is abundant uh, with uh, rivers and the construction of small hydropower plants threatens to destroy and uh, impair our uh, sources of water and development uh, of uh, flora and fauna. One of the activities of the Coalition for Protection of Rivers uh, is to support local associations and citizens uh, who fight uh, uh, to, to uh, protect uh, individual rivers. Uh, we have uh, uh, selected the so-called brave women from Kruščica. And um, I would like to invite uh, the participants, the participants of the webinar to uh, find out more about this case. One of the uh, reasons uh, why the hydropower plants uh, are constructed more and more uh, is the subsidy system. The small and medium hydropower plants uh, are subsidized under the electricity law. The investors sign uh, uh, contracts uh, with local electrical company and uh, the the term for subsidies is in the federation is uh, 15 years in the republic of Srpska 12 they have very safe source of income and uh, this is an incentive for investors uh, to construct mini powder power plants uh, it, it's not really the protection of environment uh, uh, this argument that they have use and this is why we are fighting against these detrimental projects i will present two cases and uh, you will be able to clearly see that what are the problem of the participation of public uh, in environmental projects one of them is related to hydropower plants and the other is uh, related to waste management uh, 
uh, the first uh, sta case study is a small hydropower plant Ushche. It uh, should have been constructed uh, on the Lashva River. The concession was granted by the Canton, Central Bosnian Canton, and uh, for the small hydropower plant Ushche. In September 2018, the investor applied uh, for uh, issues of environmental permit uh, and for the uh, environmental impact study for this small hydropower plant. Uh, the Ministry of uh, the Canton held the public hearing. However, the way in which uh, it was uh, uh, published, it was not in compliance with the law on environmental protection. Uh, the citizens uh, found out about this uh, public hearing uh, accidentally through a small advertisement, but this invitation was not uh, announced uh, through public media or official website or local newspaper. But the brave women from Kruščica who live in this uh, municipality informed uh, Aku Center that there would be the public hearing on the 30th of Yule 2019, and the Arco Center found out about this public hearing. I participated in that public um, discussion, and um, they made it very difficult for me because when I wanted to get to the whole where the public consultations were to be held, one of the officials from Vitez municipality tried to physically prevent me from coming into the hall and uh, telling me that I need an invite to come in. But I have to underline that this happened before the corona pandemic in 2019. I explained that I am a lawyer uh, by profession and I know my rights and he has to let me in to participate in public consultations. After that, uh, it, I was enabled to participate after my fight and I send written comments after the public consultation. After submitted comments, and since I participated as a party in the procedure, the ministry was obligated to uh, provide me with a copy of environmental permit, which is in line with the Orhos Convention, but they failed to do so because, uh, and that's why uh, we sent a request uh, based on the uh, law on access to information. And the ministry said that they enabled the insight into the documentation, which means that any person could come into the offices of the ministry and inspect the documents. We sent an appeal to the ministry and we said this is not in line with the Orhus Convention because the ministry was obligated first to make minutes on public consultations and then enable citizens to access uh, um, uh, permits on uh, internet and they were obligated to send a copy on issued environmental permit, especially if in line with the request for access to information uh, that was requested. And uh, based on those explanations, we send an appeal to the Ministry uh, for Environment Protection. And then we brought a lawsuit before the cantonal court and uh, we got a judgment uh, in our favor from the Novi Travnik cantonal court. So based on that, you can conclude how much knowledge and effort you need to have to receive a piece of information that you require. So public is 
forced to use legal remedies to obtain basic information that is supposed to be public and provided upon the request. So citizens who are aware of those issues, like uh, brave women of Krushica, uh, addressed our organization and other organization to help us in the legal matters and protect their rights in a true democratic society, which wants to protect environment, this should have never happened. So this is an example where participation of public, which was made difficult, but still enabled a voice of citizens to be heard. Another example that I will present you is a positive example where at the beginning, before issuing the environmental permit, the citizens managed to prevent very harmful project which would not only endanger a local community but also surrounding cities including Sarajevo. In August 2017, Federa Federation Administration of Civil Protection addressed the Ministry of Economy, uh, Economy in Gorizde and the government of Gorizde with a request to establish a range for destruction of explosives. A month later, in September 2017, company UNIS addressed this ministry with a request to solve a problem of waste explosives from the production process. And uh, previously, they were destroyed at the Trieteja site, uh, where there are private properties. But since citizens uh, started uh, um, raising their voices against it, this company wanted to find an adequate solution. So that's why they addressed the ministry. The Ministry of Economy in Gorosh and government um, held the meetings on several occasions with this company and uh, with the Federation Civil Protection Administration afterwards. They um, identified that the best site for destruction of explosives would be Arucavat Chanak. So they internally decided on the location. Uh, waste explosive destruction is very risky business and it's very harmful for environment. And as a rule, it's done uh, deeply underground to prevent the particles from the explosives floating around. But this location is on a higher ground above Gorazde and the very destruction of these explosives would mean that the weather elements would spread those particles around Gorazde and probably reach other cities, including Sarajevo, regardless of the appeals from the local community, which obtain information that this range will be built. And before holding a public consultation, they sent uh, the documents to the government and requesting that this um, decision be canceled. Nothing happened, the experts tried to communicate with the ministry several times on their 15th um, session, extraordinary session in August 2018. They passed a decision where they established public interest for building this range. And then the public addressed our center and asked for legal help because they were aware how much this range would be harmful for their health and the surrounding cities as well. So the public uh, gathered peacefully, frequently, and in the meantime, Orhas Center um, provided information uh, to the public uh, regarding the state of affairs and the current status of this um, location. 
after that a declaration was adopted that this decision be uh, set aside and this declaration was uh, encouraged by the legal advice given from Orhas uh, Center and um, we were able to establish that they violated so many regulations before passing the decision on establishing the public interest. And we uh, addressed uh, various institutions um, uh, to set aside this decision, but the very important factor was the public because they communicated throughout with the government, with the authorities, and they peacefully gathered and they implemented the second pillar of Aarhus uh, Convention, which is a public gathering, uh, regardless of the fact that they were um, left out uh, from the beginning of the process. What I want to underline is the request for the access to information because all citizens have problems to obtain the response uh, to their request. In this case, we were uh, regularly, uh, we regularly received responses from the authorities so that, that we were able to exert pressure in time and uh, at um, uh, relevant stakeholders. At the session, of the Gorazda Assembly in February 2020, a decision was made to set aside the decision on establishing the public interest for building a range for destruction of explosives. And this is the result of the efforts of the citizens of the public and the centers, uh, Arhu Center. And this is a great example how public can uh, utilize their right and motivate the authorities to work on their behalf, on their best interest to protect environment. That's it from me. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Amina. Now, according to agenda, we will have a brief break and it is supposed to be 10 minutes so I propose that we be back 10 20 because we are a bit over the schedule, so we are shorten this break for eight to eight minutes. So 10.20, we will be back, 10.20, thank you.
Pozdrav svima. Evo nas We are back on our fifth webinar, uh, which is titled Benefits of Public Participation in Environmental Policy Making, Learning from BNH and Estonia. We heard some case studies in the last presentation about the public participation in BNH study cases. And now we will hear the government experience of public participation and involvement in environment policy making uh, Estonian case study. This case study will explain how and when the public gets information, how the public is invited to participate identification of the challenges and benefits of public participation from the perspective of the Estonian governmental body. And this presentation will be held by Mr. Kaupo Henma, his representative from the Ministry of the Environment, Estonia. Mr. Kaupo Henma has a master degree uh, in natural sciences from Tallinn University. He served as a head of uh, Environment Management Department from 2014, 2018, and since then, he has been Deputy Secretary General of Environmental Management, Environmental Technology, and International Cooperation uh, with the Ministry of the Environment, Estonia. Before working at the ministry, he was also environmental consultant at a private environmental consultation company. So I am to give the floor to Mr. Heinma to start with his presentation. Go ahead. Good morning. I hope uh, you can uh, hear me. That's, uh, that's nice, yes, as um, you already saw my uh, my background, I'm working in the Ministry of Environment in Estonia at the moment, uh, but previously I worked for, for many years as, um, as a consultant and uh, environmental expert uh, in a private company. So I have a background from, from, from uh, different sides, uh, from, from uh, expert, uh, and uh, lots of experience regarding environmental impact assessments and, uh, and strategic um, uh, environmental as assessments. And during that, I, I participated and organized uh, a lot of uh, uh, public part participations, um, both the publication of the documents as well as uh, uh, the public, uh, public hearings. And now I've been working in, in the Ministry of Environment for many years and have the background of um, as a policymaker. Next slide, please. As um, many uh, have, uh, uh, presentations um, has have already uh, shown, there is a um, legal background of uh, international background and uh, EU directives and um, and uh, as uh, mentioned in uh, in many uh, many times already, the Orkut Convention is uh, is a key principle and key, key treaty as uh, for uh, public participation and, uh, and the environmental information uh, sharing and uh, the publication. And it's the same in Estonia. And uh, Estonia is a party both the the Orkut Convention as well as a. Uh, ESPO Commission and this protocol that is uh, for the environmental impact assessments and, uh, and the strategic uh, environmental assessments. And both are the key for public, uh, public participations. And, uh, and the EIA and SCA uh, are both uh, the, the core of uh, these uh, this, um, instruments are the, the public participation and the public uh, uh, gatherings and then the EU it, uh, also has the directives, and it's um, the the system is usually that the EU 
is, um, is also a party of, of the conventions and the EU is a party of or Orkus and Despo Convention as a uh, organization and they transpose uh, those principles uh, into EU law, mainly uh, different directives. So there's a directive for, for, the, uh, for the information, uh, public access to environmental information and, and the feeling, as well as the EIA directive and, uh, and SCA uh, directive. Next slide, please. And uh, Estonia also has transposed uh, uh, both treaties. I, I mentioned as well uh, the directives. So in Estonia, uh, law uh, has uh, all those um, uh, uh, directives and treaties uh, in place. And uh, there is a brief legal background of Estonian context. And uh, of course, uh, we have the, the access to information and uh, uh, already in um, in the constitution, but the main uh, main laws are the Administrative Procedure Act, that is uh, for uh, all the uh, uh, procedures that has to follow, uh, and uh, and also the EIA and SEA and uh, and permitting, they are all has to comply with uh, with this uh, act. And in um, in uh, environmental law, there's a general part of the Environmental Code Act that is a main principle uh, of the environmental um, uh, law, environmental principles, as well as the the public participations. So it's uh, the system in Estonia that we have this. Uh, it's like a, a framework law, and then we have specific uh, laws, uh, including Waste Act, uh, Ambient Air Protection Act. The Water Act, Nature Conservation Act, uh, EIA uh, and SCA Act, and then and the main principle in uh, principles in, uh, in in the general part of the Environmental Code Act, and then the, the specific part in, in different uh, specific uh, laws. And there is also other non-environmental legislation, uh, including uh, Planning Act. The Planning Act is, uh, is regulating how the spatial plans are, are uh, the system uh, for the spatial plans as well as the procedures and, uh, and it includes also the SCA part uh, of, um, uh, of the spatial planning because many uh, spatial plans are obligatory to have the SCA as, uh, as well, and some some of the uh, cases the, is the screening necessary, and then sometimes it, in some cases it's um, it's uh, voluntary, and also the building code that uh, regulates uh, how the buildings uh, are uh, constructed, and as well as the building uh, permitting, and uh, it's uh, it can be the case that the, that the building. Uh, Permit meets and SEA, uh, EIA as as well. So basically, there is many uh, many acts that regulates uh, the the permitting or, or SEA or EIA system and uh, how the public uh, should be involved uh, in the process. Next slide, please. Here is the main uh, main principles uh, and. Uh, all these principles are in uh, in the general part of the Environmental uh, Act, and it's mainly principles uh, from uh, from the Orkut Convention around on principles that is uh, quite quite general. But uh, but of course, uh, uh, one of the main uh, uh, main principles uh, regarding the uh, public participation is the right to participate in the making. Uh, in uh, making decision of significant uh, environmental impact, basically um, uh, to participate in the EIA and SCA process, and also right to participate in drafting instruments of general application, which have significant uh, impact on uh, on environment. It means uh, also that uh, the permitting process is uh, is open and uh, and the, the per permit and uh, the application and the permit. Of uh, uh, public. Next slide, please. 
to go uh, more uh, in, in different part of, uh, of the processes, uh, the important part is also the public participation of draft uh, legislations. Uh, in Estonia, we have a specific uh, uh, database uh, that uh, is accessible for the, for the public, where uh, uh, all the draft regulations uh, are uh, are open and uh, and can the public can have an access. And uh, also, the draft law is sent to specific uh, stakeholders. It includes the ministries, but uh, but other stakeholders, uh, including NGOs, uh, via this uh, this uh, database. Uh, and uh, and the history is uh, is there at the moment. Uh, if I want to see how, let's say, EIA uh, law uh, has. Um, has uh, has involved. Uh, it's uh, it's possible to see the, the draft regulations, the comments from the ministries and uh, and other participants, other stakeholders, and, uh, and it's uh, it's accessible. Next slide, please. Uh, next um, uh, is the public participation of special plans, and uh, and they have um, different. Uh, uh spatial plans starting from uh, national spatial plan and uh, finished with the data spatial plans and um, there is others and uh, the EIA is mandatory for national spatial plans uh, comprehensive plans and uh, usually also national designated spatial plans that is uh, basically for the uh, the the objects that have a significant impact, including uh, railways, uh, uh, big motorways, uh, motorways, and so on. So they are mandatory to, to have the SCA, but let's say for, for the detailed spatial plans that is for very detailed and uh, takes uh, a small area. And if it's, uh, it's uh, not having any, uh, significant uh, impact uh, then it's uh, it's not necessary but uh, but all those uh, spatial plans uh, have also this uh, public uh, procedure basically it's uh, it's published and if necessary uh, public hearings as uh, as well next slide please for the, the environmental uh, permits as I already uh, mentioned, the environmental uh, permitting is an open procedure. It means that the permit applications uh, are public, uh, unless there is a business secret. Uh, this part of, uh, of the permit is, uh, is uh, not public, but uh, it's uh, had to show that, uh, that it's, it is really a business secret. And it's uh, it's not quite uh, quite often that uh, there is a public secret because uh, uh, everything is not a secret, uh, especially if it's um, impacts the the stakeholders. And the permits uh, as well, we have a specific uh, once again the database where uh, the environmental uh, permits uh, are uh, uh, are in place, both the the, the applications as well as the uh, letters and the decision and, uh, and the permit uh, itself and um, and it's uh, accessible for for wider public and there is uh, at the moment uh, three type of permits uh, environmental permit integrated environmental permit integrated environment permit is uh, so-called IPPC uh, directive um, that comes from uh, uh, EU directive for uh, 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 industrial emissions directive, and it's of uh, those uh, the permits often meet an EIA as uh, as well. And then uh, there is a, another permit mainly registration that is so called uh, low environmental impact. Um, the activities 
but environmental permit uh, sometimes has a EIA as well. Next slide, please. Of course, the main uh, main instruments uh, for, the, for the public uh, participation is uh, is the environmental impact uh, assessment as uh, EIA and the strategic environmental assessment, so called the SCA. And both, uh, as we know, are open procedure and uses active public participation. And and uh, the, as Kaya already um, mentioned in uh, her presentation, the the core of the EIA is, uh, is the public participation and the use of uh, public uh, information as a, as a tool. SCA in Estonia has different procedure for spatial plans and uh, other strategies, um, plans or programs, uh, uh, but uh, there is um, two, uh, the, the common is that at least two publication of the documents and at least two public hearings um, for, for SCA for strategies, uh, plans and programs. Uh, it's the, uh, the, the screening uh, stage uh, ends with a, with a pro program that is uh, published and, uh, and the, 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 uh, there is a public hearing as well. And um, but for the spatial plans, it's uh, called not program, but, uh, but otherwise, but main principle is the, is the same. The, the screening, it means the, the terms of preference for, for making the, the uh, impact assessment and the term of preference for making the, the, the statement. And the, and the public hearings. And also the EIA has at least two public occasions uh, uh, the EIA program phase and the EIA report phase and two public hearings. And to be a bit more concrete, the, the, the public display must last for no less than 40 days for SCA and the EIA programs and uh, 21 days for SCA uh, and 30 days for EIA reports. And uh, many of them uh, those days uh, come from uh, from the relevant directives. Next slide, please. And um, for the environmental impact assessment, uh, the decision maker gives uh, a notice of the public display of uh, and public consultation regarding an uh, environmental impact assessment program. At least in the official publication, uh, it's a specific uh, web page, uh, Ameti Kutiada, and that where uh, everybody has have the access and see all the the, the publications of uh, of EIA uh, programs or uh, or EIA uh, uh, reports, as well as initiating the EIA. All the initiations uh, are also uh, published uh, in uh, in this uh, uh, official web page, and uh, also at the expense of the developer in one national newspaper or one local or county newspaper. So uh, the, uh, there is a notice uh, in, uh, in a newspaper, and uh, and the, the developer pays for for this. Um, the, advertisement in, and in at least one public uh, building or place of the location of the proposed activity, like uh, shops, libraries, schools, bus stops, basically this is uh, three different uh, places. The Dramatic the, Island, the, the, the web page, then a newspaper, and also in, um, in uh, one public building or place. And also uh, the the decision maker uh, sends the, the email um, to uh, the uh, specific uh, stakeholders. Next page. Uh, and uh, everyone has the right to assess the, the program and, uh, and uh, also Make a comments and get answers from uh, from the comments. So basically, if I read the the, the program, then uh, I 
have an opinion and I can write my opinion or ask questions and uh, if there's questions I have to get the, the answer during the public uh, hearing or uh, later in, um, in written format. And it, uh, it's the same actually uh, for the for the EIA report as well. So basically, and it's the same for the, for the SCA. The, the SCA program or the EIA program is published and uh, I can make an opinion and get an answer and the same for the, for the report. I read the report, I, um, I have an opinion, I send my, uh, my opinion, my questions, and I have to get the, the, the answers. Next slide, please. So it, it was uh, the, the main principle of Estonia, and, uh, and now some uh, some points. Uh, what is the the benefits? Why why we are using for that? And um, and first um, and very important is that if there is a decision uh, that affects the the people, they need to know. What will happen, and and also because it affects their lives. If there will be a new factory or a railway or a, or a airport or, or motorway, they need to know how to plan their uh, their lives and uh, and make decisions. And also, uh, the the public participation helps to improve the quality of decisions because uh, the the public, especially the, the neighbors, um, uh, they know the best, the local conditions. They, they know the, the history, they, uh, they know also the social values of, uh, of the community. So it's, it's very important to get this information and it can improve uh, the decision. Also to, to, pri uh, to provide inform uh, important information. And um, Sometimes it's um, it's discussable, but it helps to find the new solutions. Because, but uh, I believe, and uh, as a previous expert as, as well, that uh, that uh, the partnership with, uh, with the stakeholders uh, gets the, the new solutions. And for the EIA uh, and the SEA, the the key principle is uh, to find an alternatives, and uh, and it's the one of the best ways to to have. A best alternative uh, and uh, to have a variation of, uh, of alternatives. Also to avoid the conflict because uh, often the, the conflict uh, comes uh, when um, the decision uh, has already made or very end of the decision making that, uh, that uh, uh, if someone gets to know the, that there will be a, a, uh, an activity and uh, and then it's, wow, now, now it's here. Why I haven't noticed, I, why I don't have anything uh, to know about that. Or uh, then, uh, then it's too, too late. Uh, and uh, one principle is to, to start the public participation and to share the information as, uh, as soon as possible. Often uh, the, the the conflicts come from uh, from that the late too late stage is of uh, uh, sharing the information and in Estonia there is a couple of cases one case it was the for the new pulp mill it was um, uh, it had very uh, high uh, uh, involvement in uh, in the in, uh, in the process and then often there was some misinformation or uh, or some people. Uh, felt that it was too late to, to get the information and the, the decision was already decided that the location will be uh, near the uh, Estonian second biggest city. So, and, uh, and the conclusion was that uh, the process was cancelled uh, and, uh, and there is no new, new bulk mail. Is it good or, or no? It's uh, discussable, but, but anyway, it's, it's an example of uh, of uh, one process that um, was uh, cancelled because of the of the different understanding of uh, of the stakeholders and, uh, and the developer. Also, educates uh, people and increases their certification. Uh, and 
the strength, the strength is the democracy, and it's it's also very important in uh, democratic uh, countries that uh, the the democracy is uh, is a part of uh, uh, of the of the society, and uh, and if there is a decision, everybody has to have the right to uh, to give their opinion and to participate and and feel that they are. A part of uh, decision uh, making processes, but of course, it's those are the benefits, uh, and everything has pros and cons. And uh, I say often uh, is uh, more challenges than than the benefits because of uh, the, uh, the the there is uh, always that um, the or very often that the public um, uh, doesn't have the enough understanding of uh, uh, of the process or the activity let's say if it's um, it's very complicated uh, activity and, and only a uh, couple of um, designers understand that it's uh, it's very difficult to the to public to understand everything every aspect uh, to uh, to to assess or understand the assessment of, of the impact and uh, and it's difficult to to show it in a very simplified uh, by way, and uh, that's why why very often there, there's a conflict because of understanding of, uh, of different uh, aspects. If there is a designer and uh, there is a core public, they are just telling a different story. They, they tell the same story but in a different ways, and it's difficult to to understand uh, what uh, each other are talking about. Also, the people have different values, and it's it's very important. One like red color, one like uh, another one like blue color, and it's uh, it's their right, and that's the way. One one like uh, one one people um, loves uh, uh, the movies. One uh, the second wants to go to theater. So it's uh, it's just a different and often different values. Uh, and the public, uh, the stakeholders, even in one community, they can have very different uh, values, and uh, and they can have conflict. And how to make the decision when there is no uh, common understanding or, or same same values? It's it's very difficult. Uh, often it's a conflict of interest. Uh, some will get the benefits and other costs. Some will uh, get the, the job. Others uh, get the impacts. One uh, can sell their uh, the land, others uh, gets the, the impacts. So, in, in the same community, and uh, it's very often in my previous background, I had a one uh, uh, dairy farm uh, that was um, uh, more than 1,000 uh, cows there. And, and there was exactly 100 uh, participants, and half of them was. Uh, Against the the activity and other half uh, was uh, was pro for for that and, and those who got the benefits who had families had the job or who le leased the land they was uh, okay to have the the dairy farm but those who was not involved or did, didn't get any benefits they was uh, they were against. And it's it's understandable because of uh, of the benefits uh, and 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 the costs, and also uh, the different uh, understanding of the same information. If I speaking to you at the at the moment, uh, I I'm very um, I definitely understand that uh, that everybody gets the the information in in their way, and it's uh, it's. If we read the same sentence, we, we just understand it in, in, in a different way, and it's uh, it's also difficult to to manage those uh, those situations. And also, of course, the participation takes time and resources, and sometimes when we, when we have the uh, very urgent development, we we have little time to to make uh, make the decision, and and sometimes then we just uh, go very fast and then the uh, and the public and the stakeholders are, are lagging be, be behind because of um, of uh, let's say if we need to have a power plant to to get the electricity and uh, and we, we need it uh, very very quickly it's uh, it's uh, 
they are growing very fast, but, but it's, it cannot be the, the way actually. We should take the time, but of course we, we know that in sometimes it's just so uh, so urgent. So there's pros and cons for, for the public participations, but uh, as a policymaker, I, uh, I agree and uh, in, uh, I, I believe that uh, part is, uh, the, the benefits uh, are, uh, there is more benefits than challenges uh, for, for that. And, uh, and we need to part, uh, let the public to, to participate in, in the policy making to, to get, because what we are doing, we are the public servants and we are serving the, the public. It, it, it means that uh, we need to take time to to involve involve them to to our processes because it's uh, it, it's uh, not done it's uh, later uh, more conflicts than uh, when we started uh, in the early stages so thank you very much for for this uh, yes i i just uh, uh missed to uh, to tell that uh, the next slide, but then um, you you can uh, see it now. And yeah, thank you very much for for listening. And if there is any question and answers that I can answer right now, then I'm happy to do it. Hvala gospodinu Kaupu na ovoj prezentaciji. Thank you, Mr. Kaupu, for your presentation. Oh, it was a very interesting presentation from the point of view of um, decision maker. We had presentations from different perspectives from the non-governmental organization point of view and from the authorities. Now we will move to panel discussion. We received many questions in the Q&A window and Snezhana and I kind of grouped them. So Snezhana will read them briefly. Uh, some of those questions were already answered in writing by the panelists, but we will still read some of them so that the experts, all experts and all participants hear the answer. Snezhana, go ahead. Thank you, Maya. Thank you. Thanks to our experts, because we already can see that some of the questions were answered. We made a comment regarding a question posed to Victor, and if somebody missed that question, I need to uh, say that Victor already answered that question. That the decision was adopted when there was no strategy for environment protection. So I hope that all of you can access details relevant to that response. We had a question posed in English and Kaya already responded and this was about the letter of the public participation. Um, she said that the work with the letter is really interesting uh, for cult organization, um, especially in uh, working with youth because they um, work is based on heart letter where the biggest challenge is how to overcome the last three levels when the participation really takes place. And the question is how to motivate the decision makers to involve public, including the youth, 
in the decision-making process. And are there any good examples from Estonia? Uh, Kaya answered that uh, youth participation depends on how the topic is attractive and whether it's attractive to youth and whether the youth organizations are involved in um, resolving the issue and presenting their positions as seen in the um, climate change activities in Europe and globally, youth participation was significantly high and long-term development projects and their long-term impact on environment such as energy production options, um, nature preservation, waste development always attract youth. If Kaya feels that she needs to supplement this issue regarding youth motivation, this is your chance, Kaya. If not, we are continuing. Yeah, thank you. Maybe, maybe you have to, yeah, how, how to attract different stakeholder groups, but this also applies to the youth segment as well, that it should be something that triggers the interest. Um, of course, uh, there are rules, as, as myself and Kaupo were explaining, and, and also the, the Bosnian Horror Centers, uh, that uh, how the different rules and procedures are being applied. And this is, this is uh, I mean, the, the, the rules should be there. But let's say that uh, from our experience, uh, uh, there are cases where you can get, let's say, very little attention, and then you get a huge amount of attention, as, as Kaupo was explaining this pulp milk case, uh, where thousands of people, tens, tens of thousands of people were uh, on the streets and, and gathering to different uh, demonstrations and meetings. And, and you may get just maybe one or two local people when, when there is, a, let's say, uh, um, a wind wind uh, uh, park or or just one windmill uh, case. Uh, so it, it's very different. But uh, it doesn't mean necessarily that the public hasn't been involved. If there is little interest, if, if the rules have been applied, the people who uh, were invited but they didn't show any interest. So we we can't conclude that uh, it was a total failure. But it was just uh, uh, no, that there was no interest, so it, there is no no problem with that. But um, what I wanted to mention was that uh, two years ago I was uh, part of a, a research or, or survey among uh, different stakeholders of EIA and SCA. And previously, in the previous studies, it was always when there was a question about what is the most difficult part of them the EIA and the SCA process. And, and largely it was uh, public participation because it it's, uh, needs to be organized by the public authorities. There's a quite a big burden on the public authorities how to organize that and not to get blamed. But this time, two years ago, uh, the, uh, the public participation was not an, an issue, but a little bit from a different angle the public authorities were saying that now the public consultations and information and, and questioning, it has moved to the social media. It's not just in the, in the auditoriums or in the rooms, but now it's in the Facebook, in the Twitter, different home pages. And this uh, has made the public authorities a really a challenge how to manage all those social media environments or platforms and, and how to make it a meaningful rather than just uh, there are thousands of comments and, and uh, viewpoints and, and how to manage that. So this is uh, where the public participation also evolves and, and it should be taken into account. Thank you. 
Zahvaljujem se ovaj, posebno na ovom posljednjem dijelu. This is a really relevant for the youth that was referred to in the question. Next question, is there any possibility to make a question list or checklist with the rights and obligations of the citizens, organizers of the public consultation and investors that would enable free physical access and participation in consultations? This is a question that could be interesting for some of our Estonian experts, if possible. Do you have a, an example of a checklist uh, with the rights and rules, rights and obligations? Kaja or Mr. Kaupo? Kaupo, would you like to answer to that? Some of the, uh, uh, some of the Just tell us. Do you have any examples uh, whether there exists a checklist or list of questions with the rights and obligations of citizens and organizers? Uh, not, not in the question form, but Kaupo can, uh, can uh, correct me. But not in a, in a checklist form, but, uh, but uh, yeah, there are, I mean, good practices, lots of different projects. Uh, guidebooks and guidelines how to organize a good pu public uh, hearing, a uh, public meeting, uh, and, and of course the practice itself. I mean, it develops and builds on the previous practices, what to avoid, what to strengthen, and then so forth. But uh, I wouldn't say we have a checklist, or how do you comment, Kaupo? <laughs> I may step in, please. Mr. Zoran in chat, and I'm reading this. Here I can send you a list uh, for uh, the checklist for the um, SIA developed by several uh, entities. So those are the recommendations for improvement of the process. So in, uh, we would like to ask Mr. Zaran to send us those lists and we will forward those lists to all participants. Great, that would be for Bosnia and Herzegovina. Mr. Kaupo wanted to say something and add to what Kaya said. Yes, I, um, I, I want to say that as, as far as we, we don't have a specific space, uh, checklist, but we have lots of uh, different uh, handbooks and guidelines uh, for the EIA and SEA, and, and uh, the public participation is, uh, is one of uh, the part of, um, of those uh, documents. And maybe it's something uh, interesting to, to know, maybe that um, as we have this uh, different, uh, the difficult uh, uh, time at the moment with the coronavirus and, uh, and for the public um, uh, meetings are not allowed or, or very limited. Uh, uh, we have had almost a year now the, the possibility to have the public hearings uh, only with, uh, with the online or uh, virtual uh, way so that uh, before we didn't have a, we didn't have a, uh, we haven't changed the, the legislation but before that option was not uh, used but but now it's um, it's used for several times because it's better to have the virtual meeting and the gathering rather than uh, than postpone it uh, or postpone the the whole process. Of course, there is a difficulties to to get access everybody, especially for older people, to uh, to get the the equipments and, and also the the experience uh, or knowledge to have those uh, those mechanisms. Uh, it's difficult, but uh, but we see it uh, as a way way forward, and uh, and maybe the the hybrid meetings will be the will be the future, so that uh, 
especially it's uh, it's good to involve the stakeholders that is far away we know that for for the access, uh, access to uh, uh, environmental information is not only for for the locals but also the ngos that is um, can be uh, sometimes uh, uh, far away if we have in one part of estonia the, the activity and uh, and the public uh, hearing uh, in, in, in this location, but the NGO is in, in Tallinn, let's say, then it's uh, it's much easier to get access and then to participate uh, the the meeting. So I, I see many pros for for the future. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. It was great to mention modern technologies uh, that um, turned out to be really important during the pandemic time. And I believe that this is something that will be used more frequently in future. So for next question, we already got an answer, but um, it's let me read it again. For Kaya, tell us about the pyramid. What does it mean uh, when you mention therapy and transfer of authority? Therapy is when um, the public participation is seen as the remedy, as the solution for the problem. And in case of transfer of authority, the citizens get a task to manage certain activity, like when NGO provides services that pertain to the issues of managing the nature parks or similar or organize um, protection measures for certain protected species. The next question. From Vitas. She said that she heard Amina's presentation and she knows the problem, and it's an ex excellent example uh, for people to know what to do and how to change things. The question is Are there any improved uh, solutions in the new federation uh, law on uh, environment protection? And Victor said, yes, so we see improvements compared to the previous uh, law, especially in uh, area of uh, public uh, participation in the SIA, but there is a room for improvement still. And he touched upon a Republika Srpska situation where the last amendments to the environment law and access to information uh, and cancelling of the advisory board. If Amina has anything to comment on or uh, supplement this, you, she can take the floor. I'm here. Can you hear me this time? Yes, you can see the improvement in uh, new law, Article 40, Item 8. It prescribes that the comments of the public are taken into account. In previous law from 2009, it was prescribed that it should be taken into account. So although this should maybe this word should maybe does not mean a lot, but in legal perspective, it means a lot because it means that the standard is is changed. Uh, that means that in new law, the authorities um, um, uh, will take into account the comments. But according to Aarhus Convention, it is prescribed that the authorities are obligated to take into account comments of the public. So it's a, it, it's even a step further. But our law is slowly aligning with the Aarhus Convention in this, in this area. Thank you, Amina. Uh, 
it is great to hear that there are improvements uh, and the next question do you have information in how many cases uh, the strategic environmental impact assessment was uh, conducted uh, with regard to sectoral plans and program victor said that uh, for several plans and programs uh, uh, management of uh, basins and spatial plans uh, involved the strategic uh, assessment could you add something to this yes there were several process uh, that involved the strategic assessment but what we could see here and what we could hear from the experience of other countries that the process of uh, communication and information of publics is the most uh, challenging uh, point because all the options are open at that point and uh, 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 it has been the practice to to inform public very scarcely at that stage so the public does not become aware. So it is very good to have uh, uh, multiple managers of this uh, communication process uh, who will focus on communication of information to the public. So uh, in conclusion, I believe that there has been insufficient strategic environmental assessment, especially with regard to the development, for instance, of energy strategy. Although this strategy is quite new, there has been no verification of this strategy through the strategic impact assessment. And now this is our opportunity to improve the process. Uh, and I thank Zoran for forwarding uh, to us this uh, instruction, how uh, we can verify whether SE, uh, uh, SEA, uh, met all the requirements thank you victor amina if you have uh, anything to add from the arc center of sarajevo if you don't have anything we can proceed uh, with the next question i could agree with my colleague uh, it is only rarely that uh, we have the proper procedure not only at the federation level but also at the local level we have had uh, this example of development uh, and uh, construction of uh, hydropower plant, we have in place cantonal spatial plans uh, and uh, management plans, uh, which are not uh, given to public consultations. Very well, I believe that uh, in our working groups, uh, it became clear that there is a lot to do on this level, uh, the strategic environmental ex, uh, assessment and development of plants. Me, uh, qu question from Mr. Heinma, uh, in which phase do you issue the environmental permit uh, for uh, construction of some major projects? Mr. Heinma? Did you hear me or should I repeat my question? Yes, I am very, very well. Um, it's, um, it's different, uh, and, um, uh, but, uh, but the main uh, uh, steps for granting uh, different permits is uh, uh, we have this detailed plan. Then we have an uh, environmental permit and then we have the building permit. It means uh, usually the, the environmental permit is before granted the, the building permit. But the final decision, if you use the ESPO convention, uh, the final decision basically is uh, the granting the use of the, of the building. It, 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 it means uh, that the, the building permit is, is not actually the the, the last one, but the, the, the right to use a building is, um, is the final decision. Thank you. 
Uh, hvala. Evo, uh, Thank you. Similar question to local presenters, panelists. When is the environmental permit issued in the Federation and it, what is the directive uh, which is used for issuance of this permit? I hope you can hear me. The new law envisages the timeline. If there is an environmental permit which has been granted before its renewal, a public hearing is required. Previously, that was not the case because uh, the federal ministry issued uh, environmental permits by default and uh, the period of value of environmental permit is five years but uh, even for renewal of the environmental permit uh, it is required to hold the public hearing especially if uh, these are uh, they, they concern large projects large plants this does not need to be formal public hearing it depends on the quality on the scope of the plant uh, whether uh, it uh, interferes with protected areas and so on if i may add something in answer to this question yes indeed uh, the environmental permit uh, should be issued uh, before the construction uh, but I should say that in practice, this uh, has been abused. This provision has been abused. Uh, uh, very often we had uh, projects or buildings that had been developed and environmental permit uh, is issued after the construction. We have a very specific example, a small uh, hydropower plan in the municipality Kotovle. Uh, this plant was issued last year and the permit was issued uh, in December 2020. Yes, that uh, has happened, but uh, also the construction permit uh, should follow after the environmental permit in our country too. Thank you, Victor. The question was focused on the federation so i asked uh, emina to comment first the next question do our entities have electronic database of environmental permits and uh, are, are these databases open for public as in estonia the question for both of you i can say only that it is partially available to the public it's better than it was before, but of course, there are still some gaps that need to be addressed. One very important aspect, which is not made public, is the decision on construction, and you cannot find these permits anywhere. I'm certain that there are databases in the relevant institutions, but these databases are not public, while environmental permits, at least in the Publica Srpska, the database is uh, quite updated. Uh, and uh, in the Federation, I believe uh, they are also doing well. Um, this may be also related to the uh, lack of technical capacity sometimes. I should say that in the Publica Srpska, the situation is much better. As uh, my colleagues said, uh, in the federations, they are working on this uh, at the federation level, while at the cantonal level, they had a lot to do to comply with this requirement. As for the deficiencies and gaps, yes, in the Publica Srpska, there are also some gaps already. Uh, we, uh, from the ARCA Center, we applied uh, for access to uh, an environmental permit and uh, we were not able to do so after 
they we received your answer that uh, it was available on the internet and in the in the meantime this uh, environmental permit really was available although we were certain that it was not available at the time when we wanted to see it but anyway the electronic access is uh, rather good in the public subscribe thank you amina but uh, we received the answer and we received the answer we see that we are not as good as estonia and this um, on this matter how do you involve the interested public uh, from the other country if uh, there is a potential cross-border impact this is an interesting question and uh, if uh, our panelists could try to answer this question. Whoever wants to answer this question, please. And I, I can try this to do so again. Question. Yes, I, I tried to answer. Um, the ESPO Convention is, um, is actually uh, a regulated mandatory part of, uh, of the uh the the cross border or um, transboundary uh cases and as i was um, to uh, terms um member of the uh, implementation committee of the uh, espo convention uh, i start with that that there is um, unfortunately many cases that um the the convention has breached and I, I also remember that there were so many cases uh, from uh, uh, regarding the Bosnia and Herzegovina and regarding um, especially some power plants. Uh, I hope um, it, you will uh, be um, better in, uh, in in future and and um, and uh, take the the ESPO convention. Um, uh, uh, into account as, as much as possible and what I also the as yeah the the ESPO convention is um is the main principle and uh, and those uh, requirements should be met in uh, in any way but also uh, there is a good ways uh, is uh, to uh, to have the bilateral agreements and it's also in in a convention and uh, in Estonia, we have a bilateral agreement with, uh, with Finland and uh, and the Latvia, and we uh, already had with the Latvia before the ESPO con convention, and we had the the bilateral meeting uh, agreement with uh, with the Finland for, for also for many years, and uh, what it gives it gives that we have every year uh, meeting. As well to go uh, all the all the projects and we can discuss uh, uh, the 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 pros and cons and the, the and, uh, from different uh, cases. Let's say we uh, we have one ongoing uh, case uh, with Italian uh, with uh, Estonia and, and Finland regarding uh, there is a, a proposed activity to have a um, railway tunnel under the sea between uh, uh, Tallinn and Helsinki, it's uh, more than uh, 80 kilometers. And we have also established a special uh, ad hoc working group uh, that, in, uh, uh, that has uh, the expert level uh, people from uh, different uh, parties and different authorities. And we can discuss everything uh, and it can uh, get the, the better results. And also, also what we are in Estonia doing is uh, if we get a notification from another party, we send it to stakeholders uh, to uh, to get the information uh, is necessary for Estonia to uh, to participate in uh, in the process or or not. And uh, we do the same. We send the net, uh, notifications, uh, and we have this so-called in case uh, principle as well that if we are not sure, we send it. It's easier to, to send it rather than later uh, uh, to, to, to have a case in, uh, in ESPO Convention Implementation Committee or something because it's, uh, it's not very complicated. And if there is a, a public uh, in, a, in an affected country, they should 
participate. And in Estonia at the moment, uh, uh, we have a case where we sent last uh, last week uh, to our stakeholders about the wind uh, offshore wind park in uh, in Denmark. So it it, it sounds very. Uh, if you look at the the map and uh, and see uh, how far is uh, is Denmark from uh, from uh, from Estonia, but impact but uh, uh, migrating birds are uh, are some that is uh, uh, is a common uh, between uh, the, the Denmark and Estonia, and it can affect our uh, our um, birds populations, and and so to to have those uh, notifications is uh, is very really important and. Even if uh, the affected party doesn't uh, want to, to participate, at least we have shared the information and something that I can uh, think is, is better rather than uh, uh, than not to do it. If, if you don't know, then please send it. It's uh, it's better rather than to not to send it. Thanks. Well, Thank you. If uh, I may, before you uh, involve uh, another participant, Ms. Numic from the Federal Ministry of Tourism sent an answer to chat. She said we have a very few experience in the implementation of ESPO convention. It is necessary to uh, initiate activities on its implementation and also we have very complex uh, procedure because the entity ministries cannot uh, address the other country uh, they can do so only through the ministry of foreign trade uh, and uh, uh, foreign affairs uh, Thank you, Ms. Numic, for this information, for sharing this information with us. And uh, I apologize, Snežana, there is a continuation. Ms. Suadam said that uh, regarding the previous question, environmental permit, uh, I don't think we still have clear procedures uh, in the, our bylaws uh, and uh, we, we cannot uh, distinguish clearly before between the transposition and implementation of directives uh, SEA, EIA, the environmental permit uh, is issued for industrial plants, but the new law on uh, environmental protection provides possibilities to regulate these procedures, and I hope we will have an opportunity to further address this issue. Thank you once again. and. Uh, I think that Victor wanted to also provide an answer to this question regarding the public uh, participation of public from other countries for cross-border projects. Am I correct? Igor? Yes, indeed. Uh, I just wanted to share with you some of our experience. I do agree with Ms. Suada that we don't have sufficient experience. This is the fact. And also the procedure that requires uh, involvement of uh, Ministry of Foreign Trade uh, and Economic Affairs. But again, we come to the question how decisions are made and uh, how it is determined uh, whether a project has uh, cross-border implications. We have uh, the project uh, Hydra Power Plant Vukbiela and the uh, project on the Drina River. Drina River, uh, in this case, uh, Montenegro, it, was, uh, it is Montenegro, and it was determined that uh, there is no implication for the the other country and uh, the participation of their public was prevented when the license changed and the uh, study changed uh, uh, this was not subject to cross-border public participation so again we have an example how we can see things differently and interpret things differently. I'm um, happy that uh, Mr. Heima mentioned our thermal power plants because they are among the major pollutants and they do 
have cross-border implication. Thank you, e Victor. Um, the clock shows that we uh, come to the end of this webinar, but I would like to use this uh, minute or two for the last message, which uh, I discussed with my colleague Maya and other particip uh, organizers, we should distinguish between the participation of public in early stages of the decision making process. Uh, the exam uh, this is the example of the ESA project development. Uh, we involved the public and we seek to seek to involve the public in this very early stage and to obtain as many opinions as possible. Uh, unlike other cases and studies uh, which required uh, participation of the public, but which were already at a late stage of development. So how can we prevent certain problems in environmental management? I think this is the main answer provided by today's webinar. Perhaps I would uh, ask for a brief comment from Mr. Kaupo, given the fact that uh, he is available only shortly here and the uh, Estonian experience is uh, very important. Uh, of course, we will continue discussing things with Kaya and uh, uh, Victor and other colleagues. Now, Mr. Kaupo, if you could uh, just briefly uh, address uh, the the examples or specific mechanisms for the participation of the public uh, in the development of environmental strategy in Estonia. Yes, thank you. Um, first, I have to say, I, I think we have uh, many uh, shortcomings in, um, in our um, system to, to get um, the participation in the, in the very early stages and the, one um, is for the for the EIA and uh, is that we initiate the EIA when the permit application has already submitted. It, it means that uh, a lot of uh, work uh, uh, has already done uh, to uh, uh, to comply uh, the the permit application and, and we can even the start to uh, the EIA when the permit application is. Uh, is fully uh, submitted. It means it's not a partial, but they have to be officially started the permitting uh, process. And I, I think it um, uh, gets uh, uh, a lot of uh, out from, from the EIA because EIA should be done uh, very, starting from very early stages. And uh, now we have a, a voluntary uh, uh, mechanism to to uh, initiate the EIA without the permit application, especially important for, for the integrated permits. Because if you make a full uh, permit application for the integrated permit, it basic, you basically have done uh, one EIA and then you start the official EIA. But now the, the, uh, the developer can come and, and initiate the EIA process when they are very early, uh, early stages. And we uh, we currently um, uh, have uh, uh, have evaluated uh, our our system, and Kaya was um, was part of that. Uh, uh, Kaya analyzed our um, uh, our system and uh, what should be uh, improved. And uh, and I think one one uh, is uh, uh, we need to improve, especially the, to get the the public and uh, the information in very early stages. As I um, had in my my slides, uh, one of the uh, the challenge is, is that if you involve too late and the, the public feels that the, the decision has already done, it's, uh, it's, too, it's too late. And if, it's, uh, uh, if a developer uh, uh, puts together a full permit application and submit it, it usually means that uh, they know that uh, this complies with everything and, uh, and, uh, and there will be a, a decision. But, um, uh, yeah, maybe in Estonia it's it's best way, best country to, to say at the moment how to get very early stages. Uh, the, the and, and I have involved for processes actually EIAs just to legalize 
the, the activity there is already a uh, building there is already basically activity and but uh, to uh, to be legal it uh, needs uh, eia and uh, and for those cases it it's been rare now but uh, but before in the, in the past there was quite uh, quite a many for that so that you you have uh, dairy uh, or poultry or pig farm that is operating and uh, but uh, do many uh, many peaks there and uh, to legalize you you make an eia and, and basically it's it's too late so you, you should avoid it and one way is to grant uh, the building permit after the the environmental permit because uh, uh, if you start building something already with a, with a building permit it's too late once again to to, to have the, the eia so I, I i recommend if it's yeah, possible to uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's in Estonia we are doing the same. To if it's not even in uh, in the legislation, to uh, to uh, teach our uh, our decision makers that uh, the first should be the environmental permit. Thank you. I hope you get something from my my answer. Thank you very much for all your answers and the discussion. And unless there are further questions, uh, I think we answered all the questions that uh, we received uh, in the Q&A box or chat box. And I believe we can finish the webinar. Snežana, uh, we have uh, another comment from uh, Ms. Suada Numic from the Federation Ministry of uh, Tourism and Environment. Uh, early stage of involvement of public, the uh, participation of the public in the issuance of uh, spatial documentation, the Water Act concessions. Uh, this should, uh, uh, we should focus on this because uh, the environment uh, uh, indeed uh, should involve the public uh, and uh, if something is constructed without uh, relevant permits it shall be illegal facility uh, which someone is trying to uh, legalize and we keep discussing uh, environmental permit but uh, the, we should focus on environmental impact assessment thank you maya before we say goodbye uh, i should i would like to thank uh, all the participants uh, for the participation for the attendance and uh, in the chat box uh, you have the link uh, where you can upload all the presentation and uh, i thank samir lemesh uh, who shared the, the link for sea uh, youtube channel uh, where you can see this webinar again and uh, or share it with others on my own behalf on uh, on behalf of my colleague Maya Maratic Tiro, I thank you very much for your attendance and I hope that uh, in the development of ESAP we will be able to show how ARCUS Convention should be applied and how quality public participation should take place. Have a nice day. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs>